So I'm not sure whether it's worth talking about, but I thought I'd give it a shot anyway. Let's look at some stuff on social media, particularly Devin Haney versus Jojo Diaz, and of course, you're looking at Javante Davis and Isaac Cruz. We go there first, Premier Boxing Channel. Now, the other thing that I actually want to uh, look at was this here, what they put together on the undercard of um, that's actually a night that maybe it's worth it. I'm not sure though, but we'll see. So on the other card of that, it says heavyweight showdown. Ortiz Martin is one month away. Catch the 12 round IBF heavyweight title eliminator Saturday, January 1st, live on Fox Sports pay-per-view, blah, blah, blah. But that's not the point here. What we're really gonna highlight is the fact that on the other card, you've got Frank Ch Sanchez again. Another outing for Frank Sanchez after he uh, got past F.A. Jagba, you know what I mean? I kind of knew he was going to get past F.A. Jagba. F.A. Jagba has very limited boxing skills and more or less was known for power, basically. You know what I'm saying? But if if you got a Cuban fighter who can sort of, sort of negotiate or maneuver around that power, you're sitting duck. You know what I'm saying? I'm not even sure he's got a good chin. You know what I mean? Uh, he's not, I'm not sure he's got a good chin. But that, there you go. Anyway, Jonathan Rice is also on the other card versus... So it's a heavyweight thing, really. Jonathan Rice versus Michael Kofi. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you got that there, too. Going back to the other page. As you can see, it's all full of... Uh, it's all full of Davis versus Cruz at the moment. I saw a workout by this guy. I don't think he stands a chance, but you never know. Another thing is, I didn't actually know this. I didn't know about this, to be honest with you. I saw Leonard Ellaby put something on, up, on social media. So is this going to be on the undercard then? Derevianchenko, I didn't know. Versus Adamis. Derevianchenko versus Adamis. They're calling what they put, they try to, let's see, let's enlarge that and see what they've actually written about the dude. So they call him, uh, Derevianchenko is a jack of all trade in the ring, he can box, he can brawl, he can finish you. And he returns to the ring this Saturday on the crew, on the Davis Cruz Showtime pay-per-view. You know what I mean? Anyway, let's go back to the main page. I think I saw something by Anthony Joshua again, as usual stuff uh oh, this and that i don't i wasn't really listening to it but i think i'm gonna give it i'm gonna give it a shot so let's go i'm gonna go here and we'll see we'll see what's up in the meantime let's go back and check out holly yo yeah there you go holly home let's go back to the main page okay so i found the anthony joshua thing let's hope it plays because he has a tendency to stutter when i put it this way when i make videos this way Let's see, we've got the volume. Yeah, we got volume. Let's turn it up a little bit. Let's see what's up. I'm angry at myself, and the only way I can be in a better place is to get myself right by going out there and performing. And it's going to be like this for a few months, unfortunately. But, you know, I do things with a smile on my face, but behind that, um, there's, a, there's a lot of tension brewing. And the only way to get it out is through training and performing. I know I can be better than what happened that night. I know for a fact it's easier to say than it is to do, but within my heart, my soul, my brain, like my body, I just truly feel that I've got a lot more to give. I think people truly know that. People still rec recognize me as champion, even though I ain't got the belts around my waist. They know I've got the capability of becoming champion again. Ah, uh, whatever. You gotta show us though, you know what I'm saying? I'm sick and tired of all that goody goody shit with, with uh, Anthony Joshua to keep it real with you not a fan anyway so you know and since uh, I, I don't even think it is what it is for me I'll tell you what let's uh, look for some other stuff for some other stuff I'll go back and look for some other stuff on Twitter again does Gareth Davis ever stop brown nosing Tyson Fury he's delighted to be hosting Tyson Fury on stage for the start of the Gypsy King homecoming tour at the O2 Apollo in Manchester tomorrow night thursday december the 2nd that's today right and again in london tuesday december 7th why is he hosting it you know it's such a 
dick rider, this dude, man. It is what it is. It's fucking pathetic. And he's supposed to be a journal, you know. Working for a broadsheet, not even a tabloid. If I'm not mistaken, it works for the Telegraph. But then again, you know, it's part of a wider point of view, isn't it? That newspaper. So I kind of get it to a certain degree. I kind of understand. So I've seen this, but I might as well include it on my video. You know what I'm saying? I don't really like to take stuff that belongs to other people on um, on YouTube and include it on my videos specifically. But if it comes on Twitter, then yeah, I can treat it as part of Twitter rather than YouTube itself. <laughs> Sounds kind of absurd, but you know, but it's just one of those things. A bewildered Eddie Hearn reveals the messages he received from Tim Lopez Sr. after his son's defeat at the weekend. I've watched it, but let's go through it again. It's actually quite amusing, in my opinion. What are, pe what are people written underneath? What are the messages underneath? Call to say, I can't believe you did that. <laughs> Eddie, get back to the UK, man. I, I don't know. Anyway, let's listen. Let's listen. There we go. His dad saying that he feels it was a mistake to come to the zone and fight on that platform yeah. and he's going to go straight back to top rank. You take on those comments? Well, uh, about a week ago, it was the best thing he ever done coming to the zone and you know, but all of a sudden he lost a decision that everybody thought he lost, and it was my fault and it was the zone's fault. It was your fault. So your well, fault. you can't it's you can't fault, reason bro. with someone like that. He's, he's called me a couple of times. He messaged me saying he can't believe what I did. I mean, I, I, no, I just went back to him. I said, listen, we treated you with unbelievable respect. I love Tiafimo, I love his dad, good people. But you have to move away from delusion. And at some point, you have to be strong enough. You know, he has to lead his son. And if Tiafimo Sr. is saying that kind of stuff, how do you expect your son to learn and reflect on what happened? You got beat. It's no disgrace. Take it on the chin, come again. You're an amazing fighter. Great fight. He'll be back. He'll become a world champion again. Tiafimo actually put something up uh, to do with uh, what's this called? What's it called? DMX. Let's go check that out. Actually, let's see. First of all, Holly. Yeah, there you go. God, I love Holly. Yeah. So, uh, Holly, Holly, Holly. Anyway, let's go check out Tiafimo. What he put up about DMX, right? Here we go. So this is Tiafimo's page. <laughs> actually, you know what? He actually put himself with Canelo up. And I'm not sure whether you can see it here. But you know, the top of his page, the uh, main page, it's got him and Canelo. Anyway, this is what he's put up now. Let's enlarge that, if we can. It says, see, to live is to suffer. But to survive, well, that's to find meaning in suffering, DMX. Why is he quoting DMX as if he's some kind of great philosopher? I think somebody actually quoted Nietzsche underneath it. <laughs> You know what I mean? To make it seem as if like um, he ripped up Nietzsche in the f in the beginning of it. The responses haven't been too flattering or too supportive. You know what I'm saying? Some papi, whatever. Somebody wrote something about Nietzsche. I saw it underneath. I can't see. I can't remember right now. Uh, I can't find it. I can't find it. Let's have a better look. Yeah, there you go. Hey, let me enlarge that. What do you, what's he written there? So this guy's written, To live is to suffer. To survive is to find some meaning in the suffering. Frederick Nietzsche. <laughs> so, I don't know what point he's trying to make, but it is what it is. Anyway, poor Teofimo. Listen, I'm not one of those to bash Teofimo. I think Teofimo... Uh, it's, a, it's a tough one. Because I like Teofimo. I do. I, I like Teofimo. I just don't like it's one of those weird ones where you have to take him as a package and it's just too much of a price to pay to take his father along with the fighter himself and the fighter you see that he has traits of his father as well and there was a certain well, look when it comes to the whole Devin Haney thing and we're gonna check that out in a minute it's just it's too much to be honest with you that's why I probably uh, suddenly you got a situation where you were expecting something to have, but boxing will find a way to just always fuck things up. They don't seem to give a fuck. They've taken the message over to Leonard Ellaby now that George Cambosos, he would prefer to fight Tank Davis. And Tank Davis is acting like, yeah, I'm the cash cow. And I'm thinking like, and suddenly I'm thinking like, you know what? Maybe the best thing to happen would be for 
Tank Davis to have one of those cherry picks gone wrong. That very much is going to happen with Isaac Cruz, but should that happen in the same way it happened with Jeffrey Lopez, I won't feel sorry for Tank. I won't. I think that that bullshit they're doing needs to be tarnished a bit. It needs to be tarnished a bit. It needs to take a loss of some sort. It's an unexpected loss. Like, I mean, with the Tio Fimo thing, you can say it was unexpected, but there was a possibility it could happen. There was always a possibility. There's always a possibility in boxing, but I don't see Isaac Cruz being able to do anything against Tank Davis. It's just your typical box standard. Pay him thirty-five grand, run of the mill Mexican. I saw him in the workout. It's just too slow. He has nothing. You know what I'm saying? I don't. I don't see him being able to actually match um, Javante Davis the least bit. The, unless Javante Davis makes the error of overlooking him and not training the way he's supposed to train and not training the way he's supposed to train but we'll see now let's go look at Devin Haney and then give this a rest man so we've got the Haney stuff over here all on the line Haney versus Diaz um, should we enlighten that a bit why not if there you go Haney versus Diaz MGN Grand Garden Arena, blah blah blah. Anyway, close that. Yeah, what else we got? It says George Cambosos has been lightweight champion for 10 minutes, and Haney, Shakur Stevenson, and Ryan Garcia have all thrown their hats in the ring. You know what I mean? Um. All these posts are old, aren't they? What you got here? Actually, we're kind of like not really paying that much attention to this here. This one here. Let's, let's check this out. And you know what? It doesn't really enlarge, so just keep it as it is. Anyway, uh, let me go back, man. Let me go back. I'll just go back. And here we are. Got video. World Boxing Council. Listen, if World Boxing Council, they, I, I don't know what they're playing at. World Boxing Council. They got this video out with Devin Haney and stuff. Yet they also claim that George Cambosos is the undisputed champion. I don't listen. It's way too complicated. It's way too complicated. This is, I just wish that the fighters could understand that you cannot make 100 million if you're not fighting the top guys in your division. The only way you do that is by taking chance, by taking a chance. I had to take that. So if I had to take that, why shouldn't they? This is what Teofimo Lopez said a while ago, isn't it? Oh, uh, yeah. He did take a chance. Is Ben Davis still with Devin Haney? Why is this? I hate when that kind of. Yeah. You know? Ben Davis and Devin Haney. Is he still training him? Let's see some new, some new tweets. The same old stuff. Haney faces stiff test on the strip against Jojo Diaz. Joseph Jojo Diaz Jr. That's it. I don't like him. He's a fucking cornball. Devin Haney doesn't hold back on Teofimo Lopez. Take it easy, man. Damn. Hopefully one day Haney becomes a champion. For anyone trying to rob George Camposos of being called undisputed champion, here's clarity from the guy, from the same guy, WBC Oro, who created this mess in the first place. That's, uh, I think, who, who put this out? That was by uh, Ludibella. No, actually, I, I saw Ludibella sort of. I think he retreated it. You know what I mean? Signing on because Ludibella has become pro George Campbell. You see, Ludibella is a parasite of all parasites. I never heard him talk about George Campbell one bit prior to George Campbell winning that fight. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, we got Ludibella. Maybe we should have a reading of the essay, long ass essay he's written. For George Gambosos now. 
suddenly he's on board. I think Judge, I hope Judge Campbell sees him for the fucking parasite he is, to keep it real with you. Anyway, Teofimo Lopez is the undisputed lightweight champion, Suleiman told the AK and Barack show. And whoever beats Teofimo, if there is if there is someone who beats him, he must be called undisputed. I have spoken with Devin and his father. Whoa. Yeah. More world boxing news. Devin Haney fulfills MGN Grand Dream this Saturday night, Las Vegas. Anyway, let's go finish this off by uh, checking out what Lou DeBella had to say. If I can find it, you know. I try, I'm trying to see if I can find it, man. Yeah, so this is Lou DeBella's page. Let's check him out, yo. Alright, leave that family stuff alone. Who's this? See you in Dubai. December 11th. Bakode Yalolov. Heavyweight. Hmm. He says here, the victory tour continues. Thanks for your hospitality. To Team Ferocious Miami Heat. Oh, I saw something about that. They gave him a, a jersey too. They gave him a jersey. Anyway, let's check some other stuff. This is probably what I'm looking for. As you can see, it goes on for a bit. So we'll see what he's at. I haven't really read it, but I just saw Judge Combosos in it. And I thought, okay, where are we going with this now? What's he got to say? Because prior to this, I'd never seen him write so much about Judge Combosos. But here we are. Hey, boxing fans and boxers. Notice the work Judge Combosos has put in after his thrilling victory over Tiffany Lopez, the new undisputed. Make sure he highlights that. Lightweight champion of the world has done every media hit available to him and has charmed and entertained everyone he has talked to. Okay, all right, what's the next one? He writes, hunger is powerful in the ring, as is the desire to be great. This is also the case outside the ring. It takes work and not only in the gym. If you really want to be a boxing star, you need to make people know you and care about you. Just ask Floyd or Manny. What's the point he's trying to make here? Is he taking shots at somebody? I mean, seriously, obviously people are interested in Judge Cambosos. He just pulled off an upset. You know what I mean? What are you trying to lecture people for? But let's go further. Let's see. A dereliction of duty ass motherfucker. Anyway, moving on. He says, It's exhausting to do the media circuit after a grueling boxing war. To go non-stop for four days after battling 12 rounds after training for nine months. And his tour only his tour's only just begun. Another week ahead, remarkable and unusual these days in our sport. Alright. What I said <laughs> And lastly he writes this it's obvious that George gets it. Obviously, sorry, it's obvious that George gets it. Obvious in the build up to Lopez Cambosos, obvious in the ring last Saturday, and obvious ever since. Good for him. He's working his ass off to connect with fight fans present and perspective that's good for business his brand and boxing this is your contribution to be honest with you but this is this has been this has been Ludabella's only contribution in actuality to keep it real with you and I think it's parasitical you're suggesting like yeah basically people have to do all these fighters have to do all the work and you just come on social media and tell everybody that they're doing the work go fuck yourself man I saw him on the boxing uh, voice in getting all irate and promoting the fight. No, there's no side of the street and blah, blah, blah. Man, you know what, man? I don't know what kind of relationship he has with Eddie Hearn, but, you know, he's the kind of guy that, even though I don't like Rick Glazer, I cannot understand why Rick Glazer would hold something against this dude and not like him. I don't like him. Yeah, so I think I'll finish this video off here nothing else to talk about really um, as the build up continues um, two days from now we should see and then they'll start they'll press reset and start all over again with their fuckery to kill you you didn't expect too much from boxing you know what I'm saying so uh, there you go anyway leave this one here for now thank you very much for tuning in if you bothered to have a good day Holly home and goodbye